Greetings and welcome back everyone to Factorio Beginner's Guide with myself, that is Avak, and of course, Shenrir. Say hello, Shen. Green Mario says hello. Well, Green Mario should jump into the train before it leaves without us. This is Copperfield. As we mentioned in our previous episode, we were going to be doing a little bit of work off camera, uh, which turned into a, a lot more than a little bit of work because there were lots of things I needed to do. But effectively, I have set up copper mining in a couple of different places. And you'll also notice quite a few fields of solar panels and accumulators because it is getting increasingly difficult to fuel our base on um, fuel blocks because of a bit of an oil shortage. Yep, but we have also tackled the oil shortage, so hopefully that will uh, catch up with the requirement. Uh, the supply, I mean. But yeah, we've, we've been tackling a lot of things that that just have cropped up as we started to get into a lot of the late game yeah. production. We wind up using a lot more copper, so we obviously knew we would need some of that. Mm. Uh, but the, the lack of oil was actually kind of a bit of a surprise, but I'm glad yeah. we took care of it, and it looks like electricity's good, copper's good, and I guess if I check on the oil real quick, we'll know if that's good. The accumulators actually managed to carry us all the way through the night with, with quite a lot of ease. It's about a quarter to half of the accumulators um, battery remaining by the time that daylight comes around. Now the steam engines are all off, the steam boilers, they, they're all off. We, we have virtually no fuel blocks getting to them, which is a shame and hopefully as Shen said that will catch up. But as you can see we've got all of our copper um, smelting backed up completely with ore um, and that's partially because we're not using too much copper right now. We've done a oh, couple of little things. That. Oh yeah, we will. Uh, a couple of other little things to mention. Obviously, this is a little copper offloading station. All of the train stations no longer get their fuel blocks delivered to them by belt. So they now have requester chests, which make things a lot more uh, efficient. And currently, I'm waiting for a, another copper train. I think this is it. No, it's not. Damn it. Um, to show off the other copper stations that we have. Currently, we have copper fields over to the west. Oh, over here there. it comes. Here it oh, comes. Here it is. Moving quite quickly. There we go. We can jump onto I'll hop this. On this side. But we also have um, copper, t uh, I think it's Copperton and Copper Shore. And we'll be. This particular train goes to both on its regular route. But as you can see, there's a lot of accumulators, a lot of solar. The factory is effectively completely running off solar now. But as you can see from the map, that hasn't really greatly impacted the amount of pollution we're producing at the moment. It, oh, go ahead. I was just going to say, it's, it's noticeably less red, but it's yeah. still a lot of pollution. At the moment, all of the mines have effectively shut down because there's no work to be done. And that is a very big reason why there's not as much pollution there. But you can see there's a lot of new uh, connections on the train lines. This this little area is pretty much completely out of copper. This is one of the easier places for us to get to. So while I'm here, most things are now hooked up to the uh, robot network. So it's very oh, yeah. easy to do a lot destruction of orders yeah just from afar there we go we'll get those that's so convenient as well. <laughs> you don't have there to go pick are. anything up anymore you just use robots most of this i did off camera with robots i i just walked around and i said yeah build this for me and then i i left and i'd pop back a little bit later to find it all built it was great that's fantastic uh, there we go oh this has a lot of copper in it nice. yes Yes, this one does. It's again though, it has it's running largely low, exhausted. Some of them are some are exhausted, supply. yeah. There we go. And here come the little robots, they're like, We'll fix it, we'll do your bidding, master. We'll good be good. Robots. This one actually <laughs> did get quite a lot of attacks though, because initially when I hooked up the oil, I mean these are starting to run out now, so they're not producing that much pollution, but they were producing a fair bit in the beginning, so I had to have quite a beefy defense there. Oh, I love the look of these trains. The engines I, I are do. amazing. I do as well. I, I really like having just lots of trains working on a, a, a tangled line because it makes it more interesting. The, the trains stopping oh, for definitely. each other and going to places. Yep. Here we go. It, the, the, signals, the signals are just a tiny bit complicated, but once you understand the concept behind the signals, the trains are just so much fun to make. Yeah, absolutely. I completely agree with that. Let's cross this and not die. <sighs> yeah, let's not die. I've already died twice before we started recording today. <laughs> 
We were running quite low on alien artifacts. One of the main things that we were low on towards the end. So, uh, Shen and I went out and cleared some alien nests and also put down some more oil. So we should have enough um, alien artifacts to fuel our research. Now, speaking of research, let's crack on with that. Now, there are a number of things remaining. Not all of them are necessary. One that I haven't even touched on is effect transmission. And since we've unlocked um, modules, this is a reasonable one to unlock. It basically allows you to create a tower, which when loaded with modules, broadcasts it af its effect of any modules in it across an area. So it makes the modules area of effect, effect uh, in a sense. And I believe they can stack, but when a module is put into a, uh, an effect transmission tower, it doesn't give its full stated effect. So um, when you're using towers, each module is doing a little bit less than it would normally do if you just put it straight into the factory. But it can be potentially applying that to quite a lot more factories. So the net net effect is, is increased in, in that yeah, sense. The, they're really, really good if you are just starting to use modules because they'll yeah. affect a lot of things at once and you don't have to, to produce so many modules. You just put a couple into this and you're good. Uh, yeah. However, once you get later on and you have a lot of module production, which we don't yet, but once you have a lot of module production, then uh, putting them individually into the factory is going to give you uh, just a better benefit. Yeah, absolutely. And one nice thing about the way that we've built our factories, we have a lot of, of our factories clustered together in, you know, kind of discrete. Oh, it doesn't look discrete. It looks like just a big tangle of factories. <laughs> but they are in, in the kind of little clumps to do a specific thing. So we could use that tower um, to, to great effect, honestly. Now, over here, I've set up automated production of just some request, a chest, and provider chest, because we were using those a lot on the network. But other than that, there's not much more we have done. However, the factory has been running for a little while while we've been doing some work, and we have a, little a while. full chest, a full how chest of blue circuits. That should carry us for a while. How many hours is a little while? Just to give people an idea of, of how well, long I mean, it Well, I mean, we've been working kind of on this for about <laughs> almost two hours now since the, the recording set started and uh, it probably ran for a, uh, two or three hours with nothing happening to it overnight as well. Right, now that research is done, we can have a look at a couple of others. Now there is one that is not optional. It We flat out needed to complete the game and that is to make the rocket silo we need rocket shooting speed. We don't need rocket uh, like explosive rocketry or rocket damage at all, but we need the fifth level of rocket shooting speed. This is an expensive one because it is going to constantly use alien artifacts to do. Uh, so yeah, we're going to start lot. work on this, but that is probably going to be something that we're not going to finish in this episode or even the next one. So what are we going to be doing in this episode then, Shen? I think today we're going to show people how to do module production, but not just the low-level modules that we've been making in our pockets. We're doing module production via factories to make it a little faster, a little yeah. more efficient. Yeah, that sounds good. Uh, I'm just going to turn down the alerts volume because that is annoyingly loud. There it is loud, yes. <laughs> so for yeah. modules, what, what do we need in them? What, what's the basic prescription? Right. Well, just to cover uh, a quick thing, obviously you want modules in your factory. Um, just to make everything a little bit better. You might not want the best modules because they're very expensive compared to the lower oh, tiers yeah. of modules. T so, take into account that not only do they take alien artifacts and processing mm -hmm. units, but they also take the previous level of modules. Yes. Not just one, but multiple levels. Yeah, that's where it gets really expensive. Honestly, for just regular use, I would say speed more like the, the second tier of modules don't go to the third until you're at a point where your factory is producing a lot of stuff and you can but i would go around putting the, the the second tier modules in everything first and remember that you can then use those modules to make the third tier module so they're not going to waste they're part of the upgrade process so you're not losing those and just gonna dump them into chair someone forget about them but i wouldn't rush to make the third tier modules they are very very expensive and take a very long time to make however if we want to show our power armor and we do whilst we can move up to the power armor easily enough going to the power armor mark 2 which we're going to want to do is going to take five of both the efficiency and speed modules at the highest tier so that's extremely expensive yeah um, check out check out the total raw materials needed yes. it takes 19.3 thousand seconds 
3.3 thousand iron, 7 thousand copper, 40, 40 steel, 60 alien artifacts, mm -hmm. 2.4 thousand plastic, which is a ton, yes, and that is 300 a lot. processors. That's yeah. a lot. But it is pretty awesome. And we'll show you oh, yeah. why in this episode. So, what we're going to do is we're going to be setting up a little manufacturing base that we'll make from the first year all the way up to the third. And Shen is going to show us this because he's a bit of a wizard with yep. this. Um, oh, but right. the first one simply needs five advanced circuits and five electronic circuits. Quite easy things to do, all things told. Right. So in this case, if we check out the recipe for uh, the circuits, not the circuits, the um, modules, uh, mm -hmm. the first module requires or it takes 15 seconds to build the first module. Right. The second module takes 30 seconds and it requires four of the first. So it takes twice as long and it requires four of the speed module. So if it takes uh, 30 seconds, it requires four of these guys, then we can produce how many of these in the same time? Well, 30 seconds, 15 seconds. We can produce two of these in the same time as one of the level twos. Yeah. So we need at least two of these uh, small factories for the speed module one and then to, to handle one input to produce one of the speech module twos. And it's the same idea going into level three. It's, it's twice as long and it requires two of these. So it's an, it's an absolute perfect match. If we do two to one ratio for two to one of the speed module to speed module two and two to one of the speed module two to speed module three, and the same applies for all of them. Basically it's a two to one. So we're gonna do like a back and forth two to one zigzag on these factories to make a, uh, these ones over here are gonna produce the speed module ones. It'll become like so. much more clear once Shen actually starts setting the factors yeah, yeah, to make yeah. these because you'll be able to see the actual icons and then uh, it'll all become clear. As you can see here, so what Shen was saying is having two level one modules feeding into one level two production and then that feeding into the third. But again, the third needs two of the level two um, production factories to be able to to sort of match its output if you like so in total yeah. you need seven factories to have the last one the one producing the level three modules running at near capacity yep and we're just gonna have the requester chest over here oh, wow. i didn't pick copper or we're gonna have the requester chest pick up uh, green and red circuits for the level one speed modules because that's all they need and the level twos need the processor units plus the level ones and reds. So we're just gonna have these requester chests pick up the modules that they need so that these factories can start producing. You stood on the spot. If you Oops, move, move it, there you go. And... Oh, you got some electrics for me? Yeah. What I'm nice. going to do is given where we're building this, I'm going to make a small provider chest that it will run off this uh, line of circuits as well. So it'll make it a little bit faster as well because the robots will be that much closer and able to pick up the uh, green circuits from Sounds this Sounds like point. a plan. There we go. I kind of wish I didn't have a push to talk right now because it makes it hard to uh, talk <laughs> while I'm selecting items. I imagine it does. Uh, what I will do instead actually is Pop the well no no we should be fine. There we go, I'll make a, a passive provider chest there. In fact, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna make this a smart inserter and tell it to limit the amount of the tier three modules that this produces. Sounds good. That way we can have a single box that we can basically mirror this design on this side for efficiency modules. And it should all work out and not take up too much room. There we go. So once again, just connect the inserter to a power pole nearby to the crate and then tell the inserter if there are, where are you? modules. There we go. If there's more than, let's say, uh, sorry, less than 10 modules, then it's allowed to take them out of this factory. Sounds good. So Sounds the factory good. will always have, like, I think two that it'll store in its output, yeah. Yeah. but then you're going to have this box full of 10, which is fine. We can adjust and, that over time to whatever we really oh, yeah. need it to be. Once we figure out what we want, yeah. Yeah. Now, has this... Right, I'm going to set up alien artifact requests in this chest as well. 
So there we go. And that's pretty much it. It sh the, the bots should bring over some alien artifacts now. Previously, I set up our science requester chest, which basically requests all the alien artifacts in the network. But I've since reduced that to 10, because the single factory couldn't actually produce the purple flasks very quickly anyway. So 10 seems like a reasonable amount. And it also means that when we dump off like 200 alien artifacts, there will be some for construction. Because now we're at the point where many of the things that we want to make are flat Require. out just going to need alien artifacts. Right. So the way this setup works, I know I've already talked about it, but you can see it more clearly now that we have requester chests pulling in the circuits that are needed. Uh, if for blue circuits, we need, or, or for the uh, level two and level three, we need blue circuits and red circuits. And for the level ones, we just need these greens and reds. So this is just kind of a compact design to get everything. Yeah. Uh, the, the speed module ones go directly into the speed module two factory, and then those go directly into speed module three factory. To be perfectly honest, given that uh, the lowest level of the modules just need um, reds and greens, you could probably set that up reason uh, easily enough to have local production or to pull the reds off the bus. Um, and that, oh, yeah, that's definitely. true for the, the second stage as well. But for the sake of brevity and, and just ease of setting this up, we'll use the robots here. And our fort is now capable of, of handling that many uh, robots easily enough. Ooh, things are being destroyed. We had best go and check that out. The robot have got coverage over most of this area, so they should hopefully repair anything that has been damaged. But it looks like we've got a spitter who has just come in through the side and isn't being taken out. <laughs> Very well, I shall go and deal with you. It's just Aww, a low-level spitter, too. Can't we just make a pet? No, 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 it, it broke some of our stuff. It must die. Gosh darn it, Avak. You're a monster. No, no, no. I've just got rules. I'll put a power pole down so we can remember it. Can I, can I name this power pole? <laughs> I can't name <laughs> That'd it. That would be fantastic. A grave Damn. for the power pole. Yeah, there we go. no, a grave for the spitter. Uh, yeah, sorry, uh, a grave out of a power pole is what I meant to say. So I'm going to set up the exact same thing that we did for speed modules, but I'm going to do it for productivity modules because that's we need speed and productivity for the power armor mark too. Is that right? That, uh, no, not productivity, efficiency. I know efficiency. it's the one that you hate. Okay. But alas, I hate efficiency. I hate speed modules be. too. Okay, so that's all sorted and will be repaired for us. I will just make my way back over. That should be fine on its own. The the, the uh, robot network will be able to take care of everything by itself. We don't need to worry too much about that. But yes, we definitely should have production of the um, productivity modules as well. But there we go. We've already got one speed module three in there. Now it's fantastic. Holy crap, that was quick. Yep. That's a lot faster than I thought it would be. Yeah. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm effectively going to set up Shen's uh, setup here, but I'm not going to have it feeding into a third tier module. I'm just going to have these two set up like this, so much like Shen has had, but then feeding into a single um, passive provider chest, just so that we get level two productivity modules. As I mentioned, I feel that there's really no need to go up to level threes unless you're really desperate to have the most uh, efficient design that you can um, for some reason. Perhaps it, you are really struggling with resources, so it makes sense to try and eke out the very, very uh, last bit that you can out of every resource. Uh, actually, we can make this slightly more efficient by doing it this way. There we go. I know me worrying about efficiency, my lord. Uh, there are so are. many robots flying over us right now. <laughs> I know. <laughs> it's a little bit a little bit crazy. Um, and then in here, much the same. So these ones are just going to need a few greens. Not nearly that many, though. And a few reds. And again, not nearly that many. There we I are. I think the... Um the main thing that I enjoy about robots is not the fact that they look amazing on the map, because they really do. The main thing I enjoy is the fact that you're not limiting yourself to the bus. You, you don't yes. have to worry about how close or far away you are from anything in the factory. You simply put down a roboport to cover an area, 
and you put down whatever factory design you want. And mm -hmm. as long as you have the right requester chest, you'll build whatever you need. And it, it's just, it's so amazing that that can, that can be done. Yeah. It is very, very good. Right down here, we're gonna want much the same. And blue circuits this time as well. And then we should be good in just a moment. There we are. I forgot, is it possible to cut and paste the uh, logistics uh, orders? I know it's possible to cut and paste a factory's production. But is it possible to cut and paste a logistic order? Do you happen to know? I don't know. That's a good question. I was trying to, but I couldn't seem to do it, and I assumed that it might be because I'm faffing around and have forgotten the correct hotkey, but uh, I think it might not actually be possible. It's a bit of a shame. Ah, uh, Scallywags. Oh. I guess we could do this. There we go. Alright, so we should now have the uh, tier 2 pr um, productivity modules being created. Unfortunately, you can't put productivity modules into uh, end products. You can only put it into e intermediary products. So we can't stick the productivity modules into the productivity module building which yeah. is a oh, great man. shame that'd be amazing it is a great shame it used to be possible and uh, people would do that they pretty much all of their modules would have productivity because it made a lot of sense it made more modules yeah <laughs> unfortunately no so I, I missed I missed what you were saying here about this. So you, you have productivity doing the exact same setup that we're doing up there, but instead of making productivity level three, you're only doing level two. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Are you limiting the box in any way? Nope. Because okay. we'll we'll use them all across this. Oh, yeah. Uh, and, we and will eventually nice thing, go through all of them. I know Avec already touched on this. The nice thing about it is, let's say we do build up enough productivity level twos that we've filled every factory with productivity level twos. Hooray! We've, we've made our factory so much more efficient. Well, mm -hmm. then we can plunk down to level three and just take all the level twos out, throw them into the level three, exactly, and start putting level yeah. threes around. You never really, like, they never really go out of go out of style. You can just keep using them. Never go out of style. Glorious. Mm -hmm. Is this game everything it needs? It appears to be, but uh, hasn't begun. Needs one more. Oh, right, right. It, it needs one more. Yeah, quite correct. Quite correct. <laughs> I think it needs right. some more. Uh, now, alien this is the beacon. Artifacts too. As you can see, the yellow area around it. In fact, I'll place that down and Shen can pick it up. But the yellow area around it is its um, area of effect. So every factory, everything that can be affected by a module within the, that yellow area of effect there will be affected by whatever modules you put inside. And it can hold two modules. It needs to be powered though, so you're going to have to account for that. It'll need some room for the power as well. But, for example, we could take this down and put it near all of our smelters and have all of our smelters being affected by the same two modules, like a, a large group of the smelters. And you might want to well, if you, uh, build with that in mind. If you uh, mouse over it, it tells you distribution efficiency is 0.5. Yes, so if so you put in two modules, it basically gives you the effect of one module, which is mm -hmm. still pretty good. Yeah, across a, a number of... Uh, facility so it does end up being pretty good and I believe though don't quote me on this but I'm fairly certain that the effects actually stack with multiple towers so if you can fit a lot of towers affecting the same individual factory then it will be very very efficient very very fast so on so forth already in fact cool. I, th I think a lot of people actually use these towers on um, on rocket silos for that reason because rocket silos take a long time to build the end game goal of making your first rocket so uh no i know no <laughs> right, how many of these we've already got seven productivity modules that's fantastic and wow we've already got six speed modules that is glorious i think, I think all of our uh, alien artifacts got sucked into the speed module side there's the uh Oh no, we do have 12 of them. No, no, I've, I've limited it to how much it can pull in. Why are there so many blue circuits over here? Right, now, oh. since we're preparing 
for our, our awesome suit. And there are a couple of things that we can do. Now, since we have our basic modular armor, we can put some things in there. And we're now going to start researching the very last uh, rocket technology needed to make the rocket silo. Uh, that's, oh, it's already been researched. Well done, Shen. But if we have a look at these, there's two ways of powering your suit. One is solar panels, and one is the portable fusion reactor. Of the two, the portable fusion reactor is the best, but as you can see, dimension is 4x4. Four four. It takes a lot to... to a, a lot of room to build one of these and our current suit i believe is only a five by five yeah it would give you can't us really no you room. can't really fit it there no. the second suit the power armor one is a seven by seven which is better you could Still fit a great. few small things in it at that point but there is almost no point whatsoever of using the fusion reactor when you've got basic power armor so oh you, yeah what we'll probably do is we're going to let the factories produce a bunch of modules between this episode and the next. And in the next one, the entire episode is going to be dedicated only to making and playing with the modules. We'll give you a demo of exactly how powerful you can make your personal armor suit with all of the doodads and gadgets once installed. So uh, shall then, we wrap things up there? Well, and then when you press C over your friend Count of Acula, <sighs> he won't just die. He won't. I might die of broken heart. <laughs> but yeah, thank you guys for watching. Hope you all enjoyed this episode today. Talking about wonderful copper trains, wonderful oil, and of course, wonderful modules. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time. Take care, everyone.